What's going on, Paisanos? V here. But with minus the wind, it's a great day today. And what I like to go to today is talk about the top 10 cars that you really should be looking at right now. Let's not forget the fact that Nationals is coming up. And a lot of players are going to be looking to pick a lot of cards up around national time to get their decks ready. I talked earlier about Planet Patrols and how I felt like Planet Patrols were going to get bought out. And lo and behold, Planet Patrols got bought out. I know, shocker, right? And one of the comments was actually kind of funny. They were saying that I was pumping Planet Patrols to sell a core. Now, if anyone's watching my channel for a while, you know I don't do that, number one. Number two, if I really wanted to be mean, if I really wanted to be mean, I would have bought Planet Patrols. I would have bought every single card out online. And then waited until the card price went up. Instead, I just decided to go ahead and let you know before it went up. And look at that, it went up. So hopefully you guys got your Planet Patrol cores. They just about doubled in price. Congrats to anyone who got them. For no one who didn't get them, you still have to know what they do. That deck's crazy. This guy got way too many lads. I do, nothing looks strapped in. Those lads are being held by gravity. <laughs> One strap for all those ladders. My dude is bugging. The worst thing to do is showing up at Yu-Gi-Oh! Nationals and looking the cards to buy or trade. That's the worst feeling. It just... You're going to pay primo dollar for something that's probably going to tank immediately after the event. The number one card you want to get is cross Out Designator. I'm not sure I have to say that yet or the players not realize it, but the card's good. Crossout Designator is so good, it stops another Crossout Designator. <laughs> That's insane. And I think a lot of players are slowly starting to realize that. 60 card decks right now are playing it, but I do think in time we'll see 40 card decks also play Crossout Designator. It's just a really good card that stops just about anything as long as you have the same thing in your deck. Right now 60 card decks are abusing it because they play more cards, so there's more things they can hit. But once again, like I said, 40 card decks can definitely stop a lot of cards with Cross Out Designator. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see a future meta in which we, that we're saying players play a small amount of hand traps, but more diverse hand traps in conjunction with Cross Out Designator in a 40 card build. The second card you need to pick up is Forbidden Droplets. I know, I know it sucks. You can play Forbidden Chalice if you want. I'll leave it at number two. I'm not going to replace it with Forbidden Droplets. You can play Droplets if you want to hit more, or Chalice if you just ideally want to have a way to stop something. And you also can play Imperm with it. These are cards that... Forbidden Droplets is definitely a card that is huge in a lot of games and can make or break a lot of these games as well. Now currently, 60 card lists are not playing Forbidden Droplet for the most part. And 40 card lists are which I think adds a little more consistency with 40 card lists in order to stop a crazy board. They just hit a droplet and they can play their board out, which is a big deal. Uh, but you still need to have a way to stop that. You still need to use Forbidden Droplet in this game, unfortunately. Uh, maybe with the ban list, if we get a ban for Nationals, that would change. But as it stands right now, that's not changing at all. Forbidden Droplets is definitely a need a card to have in anyone's uh, utility box uh, in this game right now. Almost no doubt. Like I said, you can use Chalice, but Droplets is definitely better. And hopefully we'll see a reprint of Droplets. Now, it's Konami, and there's a good chance they'll probably reprint Droplets at Nationals. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they release a set cord, Battles of, save some money, but buying this card for like half its price. But you can only buy it at Nationals. I wouldn't be surprised if that's a real thing, and Konami does that. Like, would you? <laughs> Number three is going to be the entire Adventure Core. Now, not, not all players have the entire Adventure Core. And one thing I found really unique is players that are not playing the Adventure Core are playing Lava Golem in their side, which I thought was really smart. And let me explain why. And, and you, you know, we'll make Lava Golem and Adventure Core number three, either or. They're both really good, or both. Um, Lava Golem has a bunch of reprints, uh, so it's not that bad. I personally like the Secret Rare. Dual Terminal's not a banger, but once again, it's not terrible. Um, going back to the Adventure Core, it's expensive, and it's probably not going to get any cheaper anytime soon. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the Adventure Core goes up even higher in value due to the fact that the set's about to be hard to get, even harder to get soon. 
Maybe Konami make an unlimited run, maybe. But if they don't, just know that Adventure Core will be more money. If it's an unlimited core, you might have a short time where that core will drop down a bit. But if the Adventures are not hit, or Braves are not hit on the Yu-Gi-Oh! ban list before Nationals, they're gonna be used, no doubt on my mind. And it sucks because there's a lot of players out there, once again, that are like, well, what do I do? I, I guess I just play Lava Golem. And yeah, Lava Golem's good, don't get me wrong. I, I like Lava Golem a lot. But it's easier for me to hit that Adventure Core than you to draw a three of that you can't even search out. Uh, and yeah, you can play Kaijus, I guess, but that kind of dilutes your deck, doesn't it? Unless you're playing prank kids, ignore everything I just said. You're okay, play Kaijus, you win. <laughs> The speed limit out here in Kentucky is 70 miles an hour. 70 miles an hour. They're like, go 70 on here. Have fun. So let's have fun. Number four, Access Code Talker. Has anyone noticed the fact that Access Code Talker, Secret Rare, has been rising in price? Even its only other reprinting in the Gold Rare has also risen exponentially in price. It's almost as if we need more printings of that card. <laughs> so much so that players will be like, you know what, I'll buy Go just to have a way to murder my opponent in the crappiest rarity. Rarity can we, bro? I hate gold rares. Access Go Talker is almost a must-have. Some decks use Boros Sword, which is kind of cool because that card's value went down and it's still a boss monster. But Access Go Talker is a card that's being used in a ton of decks and it's expensive. There's no way around it. There's no like workaround. There's no like, oh, well you can play this instead. No, you play Axis Code. Once again, if your deck can go into Boris Sword, I think that's great. But for the most part, you're playing Axis Code, my guy. And that kind of sucks. Because you're paying a lot of money. Now you have two options. You have Secret Rare Axis Code Talker. Looking good, kiddo. Or you have Gold Rare. You should have worked a little bit harder, guy. You let me know what you like. Numero 5. Nibiru. And I'm serious about this one. I think Nibiru is super duper slept on. And I feel like a lot of 60 card decks that main Nibiru have a good chance of resolving it. Because they pair it up with another hand trap. Effect Failure, Ghost Ogre, Infinite Impermanence. If you negate the Omni Negate, the Griffin, for Interventures, and you let your opponent think they're gonna combo off, and right as they put Print of Print, Verde Anaconda on board, you nib them. If you have a way to kill them next turn, the game's yours. Like, there's nothing they're gonna be able to do. They're, gonna, they're not gonna be able to do just about anything in this game. Because they're not packing. Ready for it? Cross out Designator. And since they're not playing that card, when you show them Nibiru, they just go, oh, oh, I guess. I guess we'll go to game two. Yeah, I guess we will. Number six. All right, this is a twofer, and I'm doing a lot of twofers, but get over it, it's my video. Number six is really simple. It's either two ways of blowing your opponent out the water. Lightning Storm or Evenly Match. But V, what about Twin Twisters? V, I play Cosmic Cyclone, okay? Oh, oh, it smells like shit. What the fuck? Oh, so we're gonna start with Lightning Storm first. And once again, I'm combining this to number six with Evenly and Lightning Storm. They should really have their own number, but I like them both combined. And I think Lightning Storm is the better card this format because there's not many ways to stop it as much as there was last format. And by many ways, I mean Imperial Order. Oh, look at me, I played Imperial Order and I won. I'm so good at the game. You, you're, you're one floodgate blasting me. That's literally Imperial Order in a nutshell. Dude, whoever went here to get cards, comment down below, let me know. <laughs> so, Lightning Storm. I think it's a better card this one because it could destroy back row and front row. Even the match gives away your battle phase. And you might say, well, V, you know, I'm okay with getting my battle phase away if I clean the board out. Yeah, it's not bad, but you're citing evenly match with game two and three. And Time is a factor. We, a lot of the players that have been playing and are doing remote duel, so they don't, they don't understand that that extra time you get in remote duel does not work in regular Yu-Gi-Oh. That's not gonna fly. So you gotta figure out what you're gonna do. Even the match isn't a great card, but can you do burn damage? And these are the kind of questions you need to ask yourself. 
Now, I'm not saying Twin Sisters is a bad card or Cosmic Cyclone. I think they're both great cards, but evenly match and Light Storm are just nukes, and we need that in this meta. Now, obviously, these cards are kind of expensive, so if you can't get them, then yes, Twin Sisters Cosmic Cyclone is good, but. Lightning Storm and Evenly's are important cards. You can also throw Harpy's Fed Duster in there and Red Reboot. Once again, not big blowout cards, but it'll definitely take care of back row if that's what you're really concerned about. Number seven is gonna be just hand traps. I don't even know where to begin with this. I personally try to get three of every hand trap in the game, whether it's good or bad. That's just me. But you might not be like that. And you can play whatever you can use, but we have to do this in order. We're gonna go by like the best hand traps. I think the best hand traps go in this order. Infinite Apartments, Ash Blossom, Joyous Spring, and at the moment, Ghost Ogre. Though I will say Drone Lockbird and Artifact Lancia are pretty up there as well. That's about all the best hand traps. So if you can try to get as many hand traps as possible in play sets, then you're good to go. You don't need them high rarity, but you do need them. And unfortunately, as time goes on, they're gonna get even more and more needed. A cool thing I would recommend is get two of every hand trap if you can't get three. Because if you can get cross on Designator, you'll probably only be playing two of every hand trap. Number eight, the Wing Dragon Ra Spear Mode. Oh baby, that card's good. I feel like the Wing Dragon Ra Spear Mode is coming to a side deck at a locals near you. That card is crazy. People haven't figured it out yet, but once they have decks that don't need a summoning as much, normal summoning, Wing Dragon of our Spear Mode, broken. Like, what? I'm almost happy this card's coming back and, um, and also worried that this card's gonna come back. Now luckily there's different rarity versions of the card and you can get a one you can get an ultra rare relatively cheap, which is great. This also have super rares as well, so once again, even cheaper. You gotta realize the fact that the Winged Dragon of Ra just tributes everything. And it's really broken to clear a field. Especially when you're looking at an adventure griffin and you have a Winged Dragon of Ra in hand. Like, that's gotta be a good feeling. Oh you DP scythe me? Cool, give me some stuff. And if you're playing Albas, you just play on their turn. Our opponents donates their turn to us. Number nine, Tropical Tactic Talents. Easy card. This card is broken. <laughs> it's one card that has three effects that are currently banned in the game, but the card somehow still has them. Yes, your opponent has to activate a mouse effect during the main phase. The thing about that is, in the age of having adventures, it's kind of easy to do. You also punish your opponent for negating a card, which I think is pretty good cardboard if you ask me. I really, really like Talents. It's been my favorite card since it first got released. Um, and I think it's a card that has a potential chance of seeing play. A lot of rogue decks, I think it's almost a shoe in it for rogue decks, especially if they can't fit adventures. You can play Talents. And it kind of is a nice, a nice equalizer. Is it ideal? No. But if you can kill them on your turn, does it really matter? The answer is no. So I personally like Triple Tactics Talents. I think the card is great. It has a bunch of printings. So hopefully we'll see more and the value will get lowered. It's Like I said, it's my favorite card in the game. Almost every player should be playing uh, that card, period. Or they should at least have the card in their collection. Exclamation point. <laughs> Number 10 is going to sound really dumb, but it's actually really important. And that's going to be the Charmers. Particularly the, particularly the Light and Dark Charmer. If you play a Sissy Card deck, you know I'm going with this. But I think a Light and Dark Charmer are like the best cards right now in the game, period. Little fun fact about the Light Charmer. If I go Light Charmer and my opponent destroys it and summons more than five monsters, I get to search the Biru. That's right, Nibiru has 600 defense. Why? I don't know why that's a thing, but that's kind of useful. Especially after the opponent ends their battle phase and goes to the main phase 2 after 5 summons, and then you show him Nibiru. You give him a little reward for destroying your Light Charmer. Absolutely broken. The Charmers are so good at what they do, and I think a lot of players... 
a lot of players kind of forgot about how good they were because we initially got the fire trauma which was decent but ultimately not as good the fact that we have a light and dark trauma those cards are insane you really need a tesla's cards out they're really broken and they're dirt cheap unless you're buying starlight rares then they're not they're a lot of money and they're worth it still I want to do a couple of bonus cards in this video. I should have really made a second video, but whatever, I'm lazy. Who cares? It's YouTube. Hi, how's it going? Subscribe to the channel if you're new, by the way. Hit the like button. Okay. Super Primization is probably one of the best cards that you don't know is one of the best cards. Let me, let me just s grab the energy of Yu-Gi-Oh! Players of the Future. Ready? 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 This is Yu-Gi-Oh! Players during Nationals. Super Primization should be in the band list. Yeah, Super Primization should be in the band list. You know what you mean the ban list? I'm glad you asked me. It's super pretty. My vagina hurts. Super pretty should be in the ban list, daddy. I'm just saying it. It's going to be a really good card. And everyone's going to be complaining about it. For the players out there right now that don't know what they're playing, you might want to look into the new Mako Tsunami thing that's coming out soon. I forgot the name of the set. It's some water set, but that's going to be really, really good, I think. I'm predicting it's going to be good. And... If we get the Marine support, if we get the Marine set support in there, bro, Marine sets might be kind of good. A lot of people are sleeping on Marine sets, but Marine sets, low key, is kind of insane. Especially with the support they're going to be getting, I think Marine sets is going to be pretty broken. So, right now they're cheap. <laughs> um, Marine sets has multiple rarities. And they're dirt cheap, and I would pick up Marine Cess if I was you. I already got my core. I locked my core in a long time ago with Marine Cess. I, 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 listen, I just like Marine Cess. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I have a playmat that goes nicely with them from Carpe Vanguard called Bermuda Triangle. So, I already got my Marine Cess. With that said, with that said, that new support is going to make Marine Cess kind of meta relevant. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, make sure social support by hitting that like button, subscribe button, comment down below. I would greatly appreciate it. Definitely helps me support the YouTube algorithm. And let me know what card are you getting ready for for Yu-Gi-Oh! Nationals. This is your boy V, and you guys have a great day.